The Journal of Egyptian Archaeology by Elizabeth Boxham and Per Stormeyer. Specifically, journal article, Old Kingdom Basalt Quarrying Activities at Weedon El Faras, is a fascinating paper which describes in exquisite detail finds made within this astonishing basalt quarry, one which we have long hypothesized would be found within Egypt, one with power tool quality extractions of this stone present throughout. Quote, the quarry of Weedon El Faras was the source of basalt used mainly for paving mortuary temple floors in some of the 4th and 5th dynasty complexes. End quote. The Weedon El Faras project was carried out in May 2001, and although in depth and indeed highly compelling, it conveniently misses out the many other areas in which these basalt floors can be found, in particular, drenching the enormous foundations of the million-ton Great Pyramid, which, as we've previously shared, display in many areas clear use of high-rotation instruments, having been involved in the cutting and placing of these stones, yet what was missing from this picture was indeed the quarry. And although, like that of the Sphinx when rediscovered, or indeed the many chambers within the Valley of the Kings lays buried under many meters of sand, we feel, when re-excavated, it will reveal the exact same precision tool marks as that of Giza's other basalt floors. Why would a research team who stumbles upon such an impressive site not excavate it from the sand, if not for these hard-to-answer discoveries? Is it not more likely that they would ignore such factors in favor of simply recording the site's location? all of which not requiring a challenging and possibly incorrect explanation for such anomalies. We have found that this is often the strategy in regard to producing academic conclusions, especially when receiving funding from specific institutions. The weathering that can be found upon the pyramids, often clearer when in juxtaposition to more modern casing stones, is there for all to see. Although many would argue that the front-facing stones were polished or chiseled to a higher precision, this would not explain the tremendous weathering or color difference, only significant rainfall would. Furthermore, the Great Sphinx, along with countless other anomalies, all indicate that not only was the entire plateau once often soaked by rainfall, but possibly once completely submerged by salt water. Yet, I digress. We will keep you posted. Many ancient sites found all over the world can no longer be explained away with currently attested academic opinion. Who they say built them, why, or when they were created. The most popular of these anomalies are the ancient monuments that can be found upon the Giza Plateau. Currently explained as having been built by our copper tool-wielding ancestors a mere 4,000 years ago somehow successfully creating some of the most precisely built and indeed enormous ancient structures found on Earth, decidedly choosing to use granite blocks many tons in weight as their building material of choice. Ironically, although these sites are somehow exclaimed as having been built by the ancient Egyptians, any actual literal explanation of how this was actually done has never been provided. Not only is academic opinion severely lacking any logical understandings as to the construction of these sites, they seemingly attempt to ignore, and in some cases conceal, additional controversial anomalies they simply cannot understand. Enormous stone megaliths are hidden all over Giza, and especially around the base of the Great Pyramids. And not only were these buildings adorned with incredibly hard granite, but also basalt, a similarly tough stone, and another which would be near impossible to have hewn with mere copper implements. Known as Giza's basalt floor, it is what many people now see as the smoking gun for evidence of advanced engineering having once been responsible for the construction of the site. Amongst the remaining fragments of the basalt floor is overwhelming evidence of ancient machinery telltale precision signatures left on many stones, suggesting high technology was responsible for the shaping of Giza's enormous stones. Cut marks that could only have been left by high-speed disc cutting, striations, precise ridges and countless other curious features have been thankfully left upon these stones, 
and these surviving tool marks could one day be used to actually identify the technology once used to build the site. We now feel that the evidence to suggest that the modern attested and mass-published theories regarding the origins of the Giza Plateau, its age, and indeed its creator's past capabilities, is currently incorrect and is now overwhelming, and that it is only a matter of time before a revival of this past knowledge and indeed understandings again begins to flourish. No other ruins anywhere on our planet is surrounded with more controversy than that of the Great Pyramids of Egypt, or indeed its accompanying plateau. There are many factors to consider when it comes to Egyptology. Within academic fields, there are many no-go areas of study. Although hard work and research within permitted areas has taught us a great deal about the previous 4,000 years of the site's inhabitants. Yet regardless of the most astute academic thesis, there remains three, proverbially, large elephants in the room. When it comes to a full or even a mere fraction of an explanation in regards to the origin of these seemingly impossibly huge pyramids remains patiently absent. No accounts, illustrations of any kind from the era exists. It is simply illogical especially when one considers the sheer feat these structures must have been. We have presented many previous features, polygonal masonry being present on the pyramids. Eroded, yet younger casing stones protecting inner megaliths, clearly of a tremendous age. Salt sediment found encrusting the lower chambers, and so on, suggesting not only that the pyramids are much older than currently claimed, but were pre-flood ruins. Thus, questions arise. Just how old are the Great Pyramids? In addition to our study of the pyramids, we have also, in the past, asserted that the Sphinx was originally a lion, which, interestingly, correlates to the following hypothesis with fascinating accuracy. The Orion Theory the coincidence with pyramids aligned with Orion's belt and other significant constellational positions. Bavall and Hancock support the theory, believing the Great Sphinx was begun in 10,500 BC, creating reference to the constellation of Leo and the orientation of the entire complex with the Nile River and even Milky Way, claimed by them as connected respectively. Zeptepi, using similar methodology, put the age at over 13,000 years. These are clearly astonishing proposals, but the current paradigm for their chronology, we feel, is far too short a time span, and due to our own research, which has uncovered evidence indicative of pre-flood origins, copper tools for such an accomplishment a mere insult to intelligence. Yet, thankfully, Due to these various takes on events, their age remains highly contested, and to us, a mystery which is incredibly compelling. Giza is a literal treasure trove once lost to antiquity. Due to the sheer enormity of the Great Pyramid and its two slightly smaller neighbors, it's undoubtedly the greatest ancient wonder anywhere on Earth. A smorgasbord of mysteries drenches the plateau and beyond. Throughout Egypt, incredibly intricate, accurately carved, enormous stone megaliths and surviving temples can be found. The Great Pyramid of Cheops, which contains the claimed sarcophagus of Khufu, which would not have fitted into the structure, this regardless of how they created such enormous yet astoundingly plumb structures set over such a large area of space and indeed with the weight of the stones used. The global alignments to these monuments also match the known speed of light. The depth of the mysteries of ancient Egypt we have only but scratched the surface of. We do not know how the pyramids were built, and we are no closer to an explanation which is logical for why they were constructed, regardless of the illogical rubbish taught today than when rediscovered. One said mystery is yet another curiosity surrounding water, the other namely the water controversy of the erosion of the Sphinx. The severe undulating erosion upon the walls of the Sphinx enclosure 
undoubtedly show that the Sphinx had been heavily weathered long before the Sahara became a desert. Therefore, one must suspect that it could indeed be over 9,000 years old. Not knowing exactly how much rainfall there's been in the distant past, the Sphinx could indeed be far older than this. The most notable scholarly advocates, Robert Scotch, argues that the Sphinx may be far older than 12,000 years. Robert Baval and Graham Hancock proposed that the Sphinx may have been built around 10,500 BC, during the last age of Leo. Anthony West believes everything on the Giza Plateau testifies to an advanced, secure and long-settled civilization. Therefore, he suggests that the Sphinx may have been built not during the age of Leo, but a whole processional cycle earlier, in around 36,000 BC, a date he feels is more in keeping with the history of Egypt as chronicled by certain Egypt kings. We fortunately know from analysis that the limestone blocks dug out from there were then used within the building of nearby Sphinx Temple. Interestingly, no other site in Egypt shows the same type or degree of erosion. It pertains to a dusting of curious drainage systems found built into, or rather just below, original temple structures. The peculiar thing regarding the enigmatic flow chambers is not only their tiny size, as if harvesting rather than to be used for ancient drainage of precipitation. However, if indeed proven for the removal of rainwater, it would defend additional alternative historical theories regarding the posit of how the Sphinx lost its nose to rain. This pushes its date of construction, however, into an era not acceptable within modern paradigm. What were these curious channels? What were they constructed for? The channels focused upon in this video can be found protruding from beneath the north side of the Sphinx Temple. These enigmatic channels have been studied and examined by a number of Egyptologists and enthusiasts alike. The diagrams created, showing inner designs of these mysterious features, have shed no light on their original purpose as if one did indeed simply perceive them as drainage systems, they are practically far too small in diameter. Additionally, this channel in particular actually angles inwards toward the temple itself, as if the creators were instead feeding fluid into the temple itself. The mystery remains unsolved, yet regardless, we find these anomalous channels highly compelling.